Ja. <laughs> this will change space travel forever. And by this, I mean this pink thing over here that looks like a Turkish delight. I wouldn't eat it though because it's not candy. It's something called an ESP or electric solid propellant, which is a pretty descriptive name because it's a rocket propellant that you can ignite using electricity. Now, you might be thinking, a lot of propellants can be ignited with a spark, so what? No, 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 no. No sparks involved. This propellant can be ignited with a simple voltage, like a battery. Not only that, it can only be ignited with a voltage. You can hit it, burn it, and nothing happens. If you didn't know any better, you would think it's a piece of rubber. But here comes the best part. If you apply more voltage, it burns faster. And if you stop applying a voltage, it stops burning. Completely. So, on my last video I tested a bunch of solid rocket propellants, and while doing that, I was browsing through the Wikipedia page dedicated to solid propellants. And there's a lot of them. Black powder, zinc sulfur propellants, candy propellants, double base propellants, the list goes on. But in essence, they are all the same. A solid explosive that starts burning when exposed to a flame or a spark that you can't really stop until it burns all the way through. Okay, I just lied to you. Not all of them are the same. If you browse all the way to the bottom of the page, you'll find something called electric solid propellants, which are a family of high-performance plastisol solid propellants that can be ignited and throttled by the application of electric current. Important part. Have you ever heard about piezoelectric materials, like those crystals they put in lighters? If you hit them, you get electricity. Well, an ESP is a pyroelectric material, which means that if you give it electricity, you get fire. If you're not really getting why I'm getting so excited about this, well, just give me a little second so I can explain a little more. When talking about rocket engines, we have three types. Solid rocket engines, liquid rocket engines, and hybrid rocket engines. Hybrid <clears throat> rocket engines suck, so let's forget about them for a second. Solid rocket engines are easy to build, cheap to manufacture, and pretty powerful. They were, for example, used in the boosters for the space shuttle. The problem with this kind of rocket engine is that you can't control them, or stop them for that matter. And all it takes is a small spark to ignite a gigantic rocket booster that is basically an enormous firecracker. That's why most companies like SpaceX use liquid rocket engines. They are a nightmare to build, extremely complex and unstable, but you can control them and stop them if you need to. Do you now get where I'm going with this? We're talking about a solid rocket engine. You can stop and control. It's like the best of both worlds. So, I did a little bit more research and I found out that the best electric solid propellant is called HIPEP, which is a mixture of an oxidizer called hydroxylammonium nitrate, that's a mouthful, and polyvinyl alcohol. Basically, you mix these two compounds together and you get the magic propellant. Seems simple enough, right? But it's not. For starters, there's only a handful of companies that make Han, which makes it pretty hard to get. But companies that make HIPEP, there's only one in the entire world, and it's called DSSP. They're based in Reno. I really want to get my hands on some IPEP, so I paid them a visit. Okay, um, Wayne, uh, I came all this way. Uh, can I buy IPEP from you? <laughs> can you buy HIPEP from, if you have an ATF license, you can. What is that? An ATF uh, license is uh, issued by the Alcohol, Tobacco and Firearms Agency and uh, it allows you to buy energetic materials that are, I guess, uh, not for consumer use necessarily. I'm guessing it's not as easy as getting a fishing license. No, there's a little bit more background they look into for the, the explosives licenses. So I can't buy IPAP, not with a permit anyway. By the way, that was Wayne Saka the founder of DSSP and the guy that basically developed IPAP. If you look in the literature, people have been trying to use electrical power with AP propellant for years, but nothing's ever happened with it. You know, but why just, doesn't it work with it? There's just, there's no con conductivity. The hand uh, oxidizer actually has a conductivity, something about like seawater or something like that. So it's not like metal conductive, but it's got enough uh, electrical uh, conductivity to actually do something with. We have two types of reactions that can go on. We have the chemical combustion that can go on. Then we actually have the ionization where we actually put way too much electrical power into the propellant. And so what we're doing is creating a, a plasma, what you were being shot at on the the e-squibs, that's actually a plasma coming out of there rather than the, the actual combustion coming out. 
when you ionize a propellant, you're, you're really ionizing very little material. You're probably ionizing maybe a hundred times less material. In one case, you're not really burning it. You're pulling it into its basic components and turning those into uh, a plasma and ions. Yeah, you're putting a fuel additive in there. That fuel additive is coming in as electrical power. But is that easy? Like, if we're talking about like uh, two components here, if I got some ham in my hands and I have some polyvinyl alcohol, I, I just mix them and I have a propellant that uh, I can be ignited with uh, electricity? No. <laughs> <laughs> There's a, uh, you're going to have to see the whole process there. Yeah, I, I, that wouldn't, wouldn't do you any good there. So Wayne was pretty confident that I would never be able to replicate his propellant. He was in fact too confident. He asked his ad chemist to explain the entire process to me. Okay, so Wayne told me you're basically the chef here. Yep. What is the process? Like, can you talk a little bit about the process? Yeah, so our main ingredient is ham, which is a liquid, and that's the oxidizer. And so we mix it in a beaker. Then we add all the other ingredients that have to dissolve. Then we add the polyvinyl alcohol. And then once it's all mixed together, we pull it under vacuum. Once it's not bubbling anymore, we pull it off and it's, um, it's kind of like warm honey. And then we can suck it up in a syringe and cast it into any shapes that we want. I bet, but I feel like you're fooling me because that seems so simple. <laughs> that seems, so, that seems so, something like I could do. Yeah, as long as you have your ingredients right, the first ingredient. So we have to make the ham. Would you say that's like a hard part of the process? Yes, that's a hard part of the process. We built and designed a micro reactor to make the ham. So you flow two ingredients together and then they react in the micro reactor. So you're mixing just small amounts because it's very exothermic. So it creates a lot of heat. You, you told me to watch my video in which I make uh, flash cotton. Yeah. <laughs> Would you say like is, you're nitrating the... You're nitrating hydroxylamine. Hydroxylamine, because yes. you want the... But what do you get in the end? Um, hydroxyl ammonium nitrate. Once it's made, it's super safe, right? Yeah, it's like a piece of rubber. You can whack it with a hammer. You can take a torch to it. You can shot it. You yep. can try to burn it. Yep. Nothing. Nothing. Which is unheard of in terms of explosives or propellants. Right. Anyone can play with it, even a kid, and it, nothing would happen, right? Right. She is not kidding. This propellant is super safe and super powerful, which I know sounds like a contradiction, but look at this. I don't even know if the camera can catch this, but it's super bright and super loud, but also super safe. Okay, I just needed to put your hand here. This is a laser. Um, and you're gonna tell me if this hurts or not. Okay, there's not too much to it. Hi. <laughs> Did it hurt? <laughs> Get out of song. Come here. I need your hand here. I'm gonna put it very close. <laughs> Don't worry. <laughs> Did it hurt? No. <laughs> you can go. <laughs> Katarina san. I want you to open your hand. It's been a while since you've been in the videos. Yes, yes. Now, I'm gonna shine the laser on your hand. And I want, I want you to tell me afterwards if it hurts or not. Okay. Okay? <laughs> Did it hurt? No. <laughs> <laughs> this is what Wayne calls an e-squib. He couldn't tell me the raw propellant, but he could tell me these. These are basically micro thrusters that were used in a satellite in 2014. These are not burning. I know it seems like it, but they're not burning. Not chemically, anyway. These are basically plasma engines, but a good one. Because they produce such a loud bang and such a bright, intense light, they are also the perfect solution for something else. Would you say you're not a big fan of uh, using CGI to replicate uh, the muzzle flash? It's definitely not as realistic looking, people can tell. Or if you make it really good looking, it's very expensive to do it in CGI. So we've been working with DSSP. Um, they are working on creating a realistic muzzle flash that is not super quiet, but not loud. Like you can you can be around it without ear protection and it creates a, a projectile looking forward moving um, visual effect that is creating light and sound. With this tech, there's, there's no danger to it. So you can just 
you know, as soon as you call cut, and the director can give their notes, we reset, action, and we're ready to go again. This is the perfect solution for a muzzle flash simulator, and I think it's gonna revolutionize the movie industry. But I'm more of a rocket kind of guy. So my question is, can SpaceX use this to make a full-scale rocket? When you go to scale it up to something like the size of a, you know, a space launch uh, booster, it's not going to work that way. Uh, it's just, it can't be turned off once you've got something that's burning that, that big. So we're talking about, you know, a smaller effect here that can be done. Uh, so we're talking more about satellite thrusters rather than uh, boosters. That is kind of disappointing, isn't it? I mean, yeah, you can still use IPEP to make cool RC rockets, but not a rocket that is going to take us to Mars. The problem is the fact that it's solid. And because it's solid, you can't make a full-scale rocket. Well, what if you make it liquid? So, I lied to you again. Not all liquid rocket engines are super complex. There's one type that is pretty simple, and you can still throttle them and stop them at any time. I'm talking about monopropellant rockets. With monopropellant rockets, you have a single liquid that reacts with a catalyst to generate a lot of gas, like for example, high concentration hydrogen peroxide. I actually made a rocket engine using this concept. Even better than hydrogen peroxide is a liquid called hydrazine, which is a propellant that is super efficient, extremely powerful, but has a tiny detail that makes it... How can I put this nicely? Undesired. Hydrazine is a material that it's just so toxic, you know, PPB levels of toxicity that, uh, you know, will, will just kill you. When we were working with the Navy on our liquid propellant, we asked them about, well, why don't they just use hydrazine uh, for the missiles on the Navy ships? And they said, well, they went through the, um, the analysis of what would happen if there was ever a leak of a hydrazine system on a Navy ship. The emergency procedure would be to abandon ship. That's how insanely toxic hydrazine is. If they get an hydrazine leak in the ship, they just go, well, I guess we lost the ship. The SSB actually developed a new liquid monopropellant called JAM, which is as powerful as hydrazine, but much safer. If you touch it, the worst that can happen is you get a rash, nothing too serious. It also doesn't react with fire and can be ignited with electricity, just like IPEP. You can also use a metallic catalyst to make it burn in large quantities. A catalyst is just like a mash of hot material. You eat it up until like 400 degrees Celsius, nothing too extreme, and you flow the propellant through it, which means you only really need a valve to control the entire rocket. Now, here comes the best part of all of this. Imagine you build a rocket using jam. At first, you need to run it through the catalyst because, you know, gravity, the atmosphere, air resistance, all of that. But once you are in outer space, you can just ionize some droplets of it using electricity so you can incrementally increase your speed in the most efficient way possible. And because jam doesn't really react with fire, there's no risk of explosions. Soon enough, Wayne is going to be able to sell jam to the outside of the US without the need of a license. And you can't bet I'm just waiting for it. As soon as I can get my hands on some jam, I'm going to 3D print a prototype and get my own electric rocket engine. If you have a 3D printer, well, I'm going to share my files with you guys so you can 3D print one as well. On the other hand, if you don't have a 3D printer, well, I can help with that as well. On my last video, I gave away a 3D printer to the most liked comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The winner was... Jay. That's a short name. If you also want to win a 3D printer, all you need to do is subscribe to the channel, leave a like on this video, and post a comment suggesting a theme for a future video. The most liked comment will receive a brand new 3D printer. Well, um, this is everything for today. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, tomatoes are disgusting. See ya!